Act challenges to the at-large system. And Joaquin Avila, who's the attorney who challenged the Compton um, City Council, um, he has been playing a, a big role in challenging jurisdictions, school boards, healthcare districts, under the California Voting Rights Act to force jurisdictions to go to, to districts. And in fact, the what we're seeing is that when the lawsuit is filed, um, a lot of the jurisdictions are settling. They're choosing not to fight it and just say, okay, we're going to put districts in and this is how we're going to do it. And it's happening yeah, across the state. I'm sorry, what's the name of the attorney who filed the case? Joaquin Avila. He's here at the conference. Um, but it is happening in jurisdictions. There was one in Kern County, for example, in a school, a school uh, board district that was at large, but that will be moving now to districts to allow uh, the Latino population a better opportunity to participate in that process. Hi, I have uh, just quick comments. First, for green lighting, um, you mentioned, I, I know you mentioned um, South, South LA now. South LA, and I know a lot of folks from South LA ended up moving to the high desert area. I know that there's a large African American community. Is that something you guys are looking at? Because I'm curious, because for example, we have on the Dem side for a special election for SD 17, Darren Parker's running, and he happens to be African American. <coughs> American community out there. So I'm just wondering if that's something that you guys are also. You know, like Antelope Valley, Lancaster, yeah, that area. Like Lancaster, Palm yeah. Dome, especially. Um, so we do have a coalition member who is in that area, um, and we are chatting with them about how we can host something in that area. Uh, many of those communities, particularly the Inland Empire and parts of the Palmdale, Lancaster areas, just don't have the uh, infrastructure. Um, and it's been very, very difficult to find the right space and place to organize people. There aren't the nonprofit organizations and networks out there. We've been relying on churches as well as media outlets. We have ethnic press, we have an African American ethnic press um, source in that area and really trying to use that as a way to do some organizing. If you're interested in working in, a, in that area, we'd be happy to, to chat with you about that. Well, we just have <laughs> Okay, well that can be helpful yeah. as well. Yeah, and then thank you. And then I guess the second thing goes back to um, the city of Compton. Um, I think an example of this wasn't, and, and I might be wrong, I'm not sure. Um, the city of Long Beach had something similar like that, and then they broke them up into districts that just <coughs> represent the African American community. And so I just wanted to see is that something that we're working with? Hope if, if that is something, I don't know if there's a coalition building in the city of Compton, is that something that we could work on, because I know Long Beach had something just to represent the, the A community in that area. And which it does, but now they have an elected, I mean, they have, I think, two two city council members, Neil and another representative, that represent the A community, so I'm just wondering. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the Long Beach situation. Are you? I'm not either. I was like, I can make a couple of calls, but. No, but I am. Okay. okay. So that's what we talked to you earlier. Yeah, that's what we, we have. We've had from a long time, decades, uh, um, district. At large. No, not at large. No, we got to wait. Well, first, it started with the uh, city council, um, and uh, we achieved that, and then uh, the school districts. So we've been a long time. Yet, so. And the, the timing for Long Beach is uh, it's uh, likely to happen soon, from my understanding. It's uh, it, the, the redistricting process for the Long Beach city council district lines will basically run concurrent with the state process happening this year. Um, other cities have may, may have different timings. So the city of Los Angeles is going to have its redistricting um, uh, starting in the fall, but basically uh, a lot of the actions going to be happening in 2012. Well, Long Beach is going to be uh, right up. It's right up on deck. Yeah, Long Beach is diversity. It's up there. Are 37 languages spoken in the public schools. It's a pretty exciting place. I'm a little biased. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> okay, so um, hopefully I might you understand my question. So my question is, are there ethnic communities that would prefer to identify with the party more than they would want to identify with their with ethnic groups and would prefer, for example, to have lines drawn with political parties as more of a priority than race or ethnicity? So the criteria, and nobody know would you address that issue. So the criteria is set out in Prop 11, um, race and ethnicity is number two in terms of priority and, and criteria that's used to draw district lines. 
And um, I believe court cases have confirmed that political parties are not considered communities of interest. So uh, districts really are not going to be drawn necessarily taking that into account as a community of interest. As for ethnic groups that have an interest in identifying with one political party or not, I don't, I don't know that that. So let's say there's a community. So I, mean, I, I get my question from states like Florida. Say there's a, a ethnic community that would prefer that that identifies a group, geographical group community that prefers to identify as, let's say, Republican, and would rather see the lines drawn and would use the. the uh, what I'm thinking is that they could use the VRA to say, hey, well, we want to. You know, we're we're at the minority, and we want to. We prefer this candidate. And so you see them going to mixing you know, items yeah. here. So beyond um, Republicanness or not, I would think that that ethnic group would find other things that they would have in common that would serve as a proxy to their party. Since party uh, affiliation is not going to be their community of interest, there may be some other things that the party uh, advocates for that they find to be uh, something that they have in common. I just want to add, I think that's an excellent point that you're raising. Um, it has come up in court cases. Um, there tend to be certain patterns with certain minority groups. And in particular, um, in certain regions, African Americans are associated with voting democratically, and they present a solid democratic block. Um, and in past redistrictings, um, the Republican Party in certain states would really favor, let's keep the African Americans together, because then they eliminate Democrats from their region, and they can have a more Republican um, district. So that, that issue does arise in the redistricting process. Now in California, under the statewide criteria that just relates to state senate, state assembly, congress, board of equalization, not city council or county board of supervisors or school board, um, you're not the the commissioners are not allowed to take into consideration partisanship when they're drawing the lines. So they can't take it into consideration. But there are patterns of and in California, Latinos tend to vote democratic. Um, so that's also, you know, a pattern here in the state as well. Um, I would uh, add to that by uh, going back to what uh, Lachlan McDonald said at lunch uh, uh, about the example of uh, Africa and Georgia uh, being disserved by both Republicans and Democrats. So as, as Nancy mentioned, Republicans may want to tend to over-concentrate African Americans, uh, where, the, where African American communities tend to vote Democratic. So by over-concentrating those communities into fewer districts, that's uh, both uh, um, uh, doing African-American African -American communities' potential disservice by taking away African-American districts, but also taking away Democratic districts. Uh, and then on the flip side, Democrats have uh, uh, split apart African-American communities uh, to try to increase the number of Democratic districts without regard to the effect on African-American communities. And, and so, um, you know, that, I think that those are uh, really, uh, I, I would say those are important words of wisdom to consider from, from Lachlan McDonald, he's been around for a long time, and he's seen a lot of uh, redistricting battles. Uh, and, and, and just to add to Nancy's point, you know, the commission isn't going to be allowed to look at communities of interest as, as partisan uh, communities, so it's not going to be effective for an ethnic community to portray itself as a partisan line community. You know, if, if, even if that's the case that uh, an ethnic community views itself that way, it's not going to be effective to portray itself to the commission as a partisan community. And so I, I guess, you know, my, my point would be um, when you're looking to keep communities of, of color together, it's, it's, it's not uh, going to be um, the best advocacy strategy to to, to, to use partisanship as an organizing tactic. I was just wondering if that issue is as prominent as in other states like Florida and Georgia. Is it a prominent issue in California? Do you guys see that at all in groups, in geographic groups, communities in California? Okay, we're going to, we're, it's, it's our time to end. Uh, we can take maybe just 
one more quick question from someone who hasn't asked a question. We're around afterwards if someone, will, if you'd like to kind of, uh, you know, grab a, one of the panelists to the side or, and ask questions. But I'm going to go with this uh, gentleman here. Who's oh, it's just a quick question. In terms of the, you mentioned the cities were doing the parallel re redistricting on some of them. Are, are the cities, uh, by and large, uh, by commission or are they the incumbents that draw the, the new districts? Well, it, uh, I can't think of one that has a commission. I, there are some that have advisory bodies, but none of which have an independent body that I know of who make the final decision. Um, some, well, the, the city of Modesto has a commission. Uh, that, that, that was a result of the California <coughs> lawsuit. Uh, and then the state elections code authorizes general law cities uh, to, to use advisory commissions. Uh, I think the number of commissions, as Tua mentioned, that are truly dependent is very small. But there are a number of cities that have advisory commissions. City of Los Angeles has an advisory <laughs> But they're appointed by elected That's correct. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> well, we'd like to thank you all for joining us. Hopefully we've uh, helped you to, to kind of start to think about some of the strategies that can be used to really bridge multi-racial alliances and coalitions as we move forward uh, so that we are really uh, pushing forward and, and getting the type of representation and uh, building <coughs> certainly the districts that we believe that will allow us to elect the candidates of choice uh, in this next redistricting cycle. So thank you very much for coming.